All content is publicly sourced and used under the USA Fair Use and UK Fair Dealing Guidelines. The things I say are strictly my opinion. Good evening, everyone. It's the Busy Beat with the Royalty. It is the 7th of January. Hope you've all had a great Thursday. For today's video, I thought I would do a little something different about Harry and Meghan. We're coming up on the one-year anniversary of Megxit, so I thought I would just go over with all of you uh, 10 things that they've had to give up, 10 royal privileges per se, th that they've had to uh, go without since uh, initiating this whole Megxit scheme. So let's dive in and let's take a look. 10 Royal Privileges Lost When Harry and Meghan Quit Well, when Harry and Meghan announced a year ago that they were stepping back from their royal roles, as would be expected, they lost some of the perks and privileges that come with being working royals, not without venting some frustration here and there, of course, through various sources along the way. A few of the things the two have had to pretty much write off ranged from a free royal residence use of the Queen's jewels, and even use of the word royal freely, which was the real stinker for Meg. On the other hand, the whining Duchess claims the British press is treating her far more unfairly and giving her even less privacy than they did her in-laws, the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge. Let's take a look at a few of the things that Harry and Meghan have had to give up in the one year since they initiated this whole Megxit mess. Number one, access to the sovereign grant. And the reason I mention this, Frogmore Cottage was gifted to Harry and Meghan by Her Majesty as an official royal residence in 2019. Now, there are speculations out there as to how much time, if any, the couple actually spent living in the home, but they did spend $3 million of the sovereign grant money refurbishing it to their high standards, including new staircases, installing new fireplaces, and floating wooden doors. Yes, you heard me, floating wooden doors. Even though they moved to Los Angeles, Frogmore will remain their official UK base since announcing their departure and after some public outrage, you could say, it was made clear that Harry and Meghan would repay for the $3 million upgrades to the cottage. A spokesperson for the couple confirmed in September 2020 that the $3 million had been repaid in full. Number two, they are no longer entitled to palace staff. When Harry and Meghan announced their departure in January of 2020, their entire staff was removed from Frogmore Cart Cottage shortly thereafter. Fortunately, a house manager and a cleaner were able to be provided jobs elsewhere inside the Windsor Castle facility. So of all the people that Harry and Meghan had working in Frogmore Cottage, only two were able to be replaced with jobs. <laughs> they really care about the smaller people, don't they? In April 2020, their office in Buckingham Palace was officially closed. Harry and Meghan were able to rehire, again, just two of those palace staff to work on their upcoming charity scheme called Archiwell. Number three, foreign countries can refuse to pay for your security costs as you are now regular people and not royals. And of course, the most obvious example of this is when, in March 2020, U.S. President Trump stated that the U.S. would not be paying for Harry and Meghan's security a representative for the couple soon responded that they had never had any intention of asking the U.S. to pay and would make their own arrangements. Of course they would say that. Meghan's not dumb. She knows what saving face means. Number four, they have lost the inability to borrow any of Her Majesty's jewels. Duchess Kate 
has been spotted many times in the Lover's Not Tiara for official royal events. She was even seen in a pair of the Queen's diamond earrings for a trip to the theater with William in February. Meghan, however, will never be given the luxury of borrowing any of Her Majesty's jewelry. For one thing, Meghan's lack of proximity to the Queen since doing her royal runner last year makes it highly, highly unlikely. Also, the Queen will not see the need for Meghan to have such pieces as she will not be attending any royal events. She's not going to be coming to the UK to attend events, and uh, the Queen's not going to be going to LA to hold events, so there's no need for Meghan to have access to the Queen's jewel collection. Number five. Never, ever will be allowed to wear another tiara. Since joining the British royal family on the 19th of May, 2018, Meghan has only worn a tiara once, and that was to her actual wedding ceremony. And mind you, it was not the one that Meghan wanted, but it was the one that the Queen let her use. Although Meg did officially become a princess of the United Kingdom upon her marriage to Harry that day, she will not be considered one now, Excuse me, as she has had to stop using her HRH title since her step down last year. Now, it is possible for a non-princess to wear a tiara, but they can only do so at very specific royal occasions like state banquets or other white tie events to which Harry and Meghan would no longer be extended an invitation as they are now just regular citizens and have stepped back from being working royals. Number six, no future child will be referred to as a royal baby, nor will occasions of their births be marked by official royal memorabilia. Since Harry and Meghan decided they wanted to step back and become average folk, that means all their future offspring from that point on will be average folk as well. So no royal titles and no official memorabilia in the Buckingham Palace gift shop like there have been for Archie. And like there will be for all of Kate and William's future children and all their children's children. <laughs> That'll really get it, Smegs, won't it? Number seven, the British press have been able to publish paparazzi pics of the couple. The British newspapers have an agreement with the palace that they will never use paparazzi pics of any member of the royal family. Get that? Any member of the royal family. As part of this arrangement, for instance, the Duchess of Cambridge gives British newspapers early access to photos she has taken of her children before she publishes them on Instagram. Since Duchess Kate holds up her end of this bargain and provides the pics to the press that she says she will, the press in return don't follow the Cambridges around looking for those types of pictures. It's a two-way street with the British press. When Harry and Meghan quit royal life, they also cut off all contact with the British tabloids, The Sun, The Daily Mirror, The Daily Express, and The Daily Mail. The Daily Mail has now published several paparazzi pics of Meghan, one of her out on a walk with Archie on Vancouver Island, or that doll that looked like Archie whose legs were hanging there lifeless. Anyway, they published pat pics of Tyler Perry's home where Harry and Meghan were squatting while they were living in L.A., and they published pat pics of Harry and Meghan out on a private outing in Beverly Hills this past July, all taken by Splash News, I am quite sure, and sold by Smeg Smegs and that uh, Splash News photographer to the highest bidder. Number eight theme that they've lost since Smegsit. Harry and Meghan will not be allowed to undertake royal tours on behalf of, nor will they ever speak up for or on behalf of Her Majesty. In June, the couple signed up 
with the Harry Walker Speaking Agency, who also represents the Obamas. With this deal, Harry and Meghan hoped to turn their new wokenness into a one million pound per speech career where the audience will come to hear everything from the Sussex's views on gender equality and mental health to sustainable travel. It will be made very clear, however, that at any event at which they speak, they do not speak on behalf of Her Majesty the Queen. Number nine, no longer allowed use of the word royal in their branding. Before becoming unceremoniously rebranded, I'm sorry, before being <laughs> unceremoniously rebranded Archiwell, Harry and Meghan had called their Scheme Foundation charity Sussex Royal. However, all that changed when they resigned from the British royal family last January. They desperately, desperately wanted to hang on to the word royal, but after much debate, and much tell-tucking, it was confirmed by the couple that they could not use the word royal due to, quote, UK government rules. They went on to say that due to specific wording surrounding use of the word royal, they would not utilize Sussex Royal or any other iteration of the word royal at this time. And number 10. Buckingham Palace refusing to represent Harry at Remembrance Sunday, November 2020. On Remembrance Sunday, November 2020, Harry had wanted a wreath raid at a wreath raid, a wreath laid at the Cenotaph where the Queen and other members of the British royal family were leading tributes to fallen soldiers of the two world wars. Harry was denied, however, because he is no longer representing the monarchy. It is not clear if, in the future if the couple will be prohibited from taking part in any other royal events. Non-working members of the royal family, like Princess Eugenie and Princess Beatrice, have been allowed to attend official events like Royal Ascot and Trooping the Color, but they have never been given working royal life either, only to in turn, reject it right along with their family. So, what do you guys think? Um, do you think they deserve to have all of this taken away? I think they do, and a whole lot more. So, I hope you enjoyed this video just a little bit different. Please like, subscribe, comment, share, hit the notification button. Tips are greatly appreciated. There's my PayPal info and uh, my social media. I will see you all in the next one. Have a great evening. Bye-bye, everybody.